Okay, I am back in Illustrator and I'm going to uh, tweak some of these strokes and things because when I brought it into Photoshop, by already having a, a an offset stroke on some of my vector shapes, it limited what I can do with the layer styles. And there are other ways around that, but let's try to fix as much as we can within Illustrator. So I moved everything off to the gray so I could see it clearly. And then I can just turn off different aspects, right? I can turn off um, the strokes clearly on these different layers, right? Or even better yet, I could try a different approach to the strokes. Show you what I mean. By adding maybe a black stroke. instead of the white, right? All right, so now let's see, what else might I wanna try? I could get rid of the orange. Get rid of the black and the orange, keep it really clean. And still have the drop shadow in there. Yeah, maybe that is the nicest. Just very clean. I can make sure that all of this really dark type, except for the magenta I chose, isn't so dark gray, instead matches this. So what I do is I select it all, right? But then I will hold down option with the lasso, just like you would in Photoshop, and deselect all my asterisks from that selection, right? And then I'll use the dropper tool to make it match the CMYK black. See? Do that for this as well. Use the dropper tool to make it match the CMYK black. Whoops. Okay, so now this EPS will be a little bit easier. I'm going to save it as to the desktop. Call this Logo Design 2. So you can see the difference. And then I can bring that in <coughs> to Photoshop, the same space. Place it. Interesting, it still has some white in there. Oh, that's the drop shadow. That makes sense. All right. So now I can try just moving those stroke effects on it. And that looks a little bit cleaner. I can compare the two. Yeah, I don't think I need that orange, right? Then I can also play with things like my own drop shadow. Just more subtle. Maybe a little noise in it. Muddy things up. You know what? I think I'm actually going to go back to Illustrator and turn off the drop shadow. Okay, there it is. It's funny to go back to earlier versions, right? In some ways, that's quite nice. You don't always need all these effects.
And so you think I like that best. So I'm going to stick with this. It has a slight stroke to it. it. Makes it kind of buzz a little. So I'm going to save this now. This is what's so great. You can have as many EPSs as you want with these little versions. And all I did, all I'm doing is turning on and off different features. So that one EPS file has all of these options always in it within Illustrator. And then I can bring that into Photoshop. Number three, place it, turn off the others, move the stroke effects to it. Right. The drop shadow, let's give some noise to the drop shadow. A little dirtier, a little more vintage, kind of a bit darker, not quite so big. Yeah. Yeah, I do like that better. Now what's funny is I can even turn on the ones behind. Yeah, and I can just see that I... Ah, something's nice about it. That's tough. But I don't like that it's the whites are touching. So here, this is nice and clean. Okay, so this is going to be my design. So if I turn off the backgrounds, right, I'm going to save this as a PNG for myself. So Carl assignment eight um, forking bull shirt. <laughs> logo and this I'm going to actually put up to Redbubble so I'm going to put a big RB in front of it and I'm going to save that as a PNG at full resolution remember this is 12 inches at 350 pixels per inch so now before I pick backgrounds for it just like I did with the the unicorn one I'm going to go to Redbubble. I'm already signed in. I'm going to add a new work. This is something I definitely recommend if you have any free time to play with. You can sell work this way. I'm going to take that Redbubble PNG, put it up for all products. Call it Forking Bull Combined Mark Logo Treatment. And then I'm going to, oh yeah, that's looking nice. I'm going to just place it a little bit higher. Looks good. Looks like a presidential seal. Try it on different backgrounds. It loses something when it gets too dark. I think gray is, is the way to go with it. Then I might shrink it a little bit. Okay, that looks good. Let's see. Light gray. Yeah, that's definitely the one. So this gives you a lot of understanding of the flexibility of your design. And of what colors work well.
Huh. The sticker is interesting because it takes the, the drop shadow. So I'm actually not going to enable this sticker, but if I wanted it, I would just take the drop shadow out completely. I like how it looks on the phone, but I'm just going to turn all of these off. You have your own forking bull shower curtain. Who wouldn't want that? I do like the coffee. It's the same design as the uh, Starbucks logo. So let's give it a background color. Maybe something a little bit warmer. Well, let's just do clean white. And then we're going to shrink it. Make sure it all fits. Yeah. And this one just works so well as a clock. I'm just going to leave it enabled as a clock. How can you beat that? Though I've never had anyone buy a clock. I don't think people really buy clocks. And yet again, I like the way it looks on the uh, on the canvas. They're killing it with their canvas. Just had a canvas colored t shirt. Let's see. Yeah, they do, it just doesn't look very good. Okay, so while that's processing, I can use that to inform how I do my poster, right? And so let me save it. My second assignment eight, uh, forking bull poster with text. And now I'm going to change the canvas size to be 16 by 20 inches. And then I can move my image within that. I might as well move all three of them. They're all vectors. So they will transform and move nicely within this poster format. 